Hallelujah. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Second Kings. So verse, we're going to be reading two verses first. So Second Kings chapter 4, and we're going to be reading verse 26 as well as 27. Can we all begin? Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered and, and answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said unto her, Alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord had hid it from me and had not told me. And I want to read verse 26 again. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my topic today is, It is well. Hallelujah. And it shall be well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well. And it shall be well. Hallelujah. And just to put this topic into perspective, is that this, it is well, and it shall be well, is not for everybody. Because it's only for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. It's only for the blood washed. It's only for the sanctified. You know, so many times people say that, don't worry, this person has gone to be a, in a better place. But it's not so. You have to be covered under the blood of Jesus. You have to find yourself in the ark to benefit from this. And we as Christians, we should be encouraged by these words. Because Romans 8 verse 28 confirms saying, And we know there is no doubt that all things, hallelujah, not 90% of the things, all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And Isaiah 3 verse 10 also confirms saying, say ye to the righteous, hallelujah, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat of the fruit of their doings. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well. And here we find in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8, a very powerful passage of scripture. In verse 8, it says, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, and there was, this, there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. So it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in fever to eat bread. So here we find that this woman, she was classified as a great woman. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that this woman, she, was, she had that spirit of discernment that she recognized that this was a great prophet. This was not a simple prophet because Elisha back then, he had the double portion of the anointing that was on his pre pre predecessor, Elijah. So this Elisha that came to this house, he was a powerful prophet. He, he did so many supernatural miracles by the Holy Spirit. And here we find that this woman, she always was hospitable, always caring to this man of God. Hallelujah. This woman, she was a great woman, but she also had discernment. Hallelujah. And this woman discerned that this was a man of God. And not only so, but she also said 
because he is such a, a great man. It's all in verse 9, he says, And she said to her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. And he said, Let us build a place to accommodate this prophet Elijah. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that this woman recognized that Elisha had the presence of God with him. And she wanted to make him feel welcome. Hallelujah. She made provision for this man. She made provision for this prophet to feel welcome. And so it is for us, my brothers and sisters, we have to make provision for the presence of God to be welcome in our homes. Hallelujah. She, she said, said to her husband, let us, in verse 10, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on a wall, and let us set for him a, there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he come to us, that he shall turn in thither. So this woman made provision for this prophet. Hallelujah. And as I mentioned today, uh, before, that Elisha was symbolic of the presence of God. And it is, it sh as I said, it should be our desire to make room for the presence of God, to feel welcome in our homes. And so often we push him out. Often we get so busy, we don't spend no time in his presence. We don't accommodate him. But I'm glad this woman recognized that once she had the presence of the Lord with her, in her home, that there will be love. Hallelujah. There will be peace. Hallelujah. There will be joy. Because once the presence of the Lord is among us, you must have love. You must have joy. You must have peace. Hallelujah. And so many times, we have so many conflicts among family members. When, but when the presence of the Lord is evident and real in our homes, we will have peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. She recognized that this was a man of God. And she made him feel welcome. So here we find this woman being a great woman. Now she met with a great prophet. And she was very hospitable, as I mentioned before, to Elisha, the prophet. And when you do good, good will always come back to you. When we take care of God's business, he will take care of our business. She was very faithful in serving and accommodating the man of God. And in verse 14, Gehazi the servant answered, when we are hospitable to, when she was very hospitable to this prophet, and he, said, he told her, because you've been so hospitable to us, I want to return a favor. Hallelujah. When the presence of the Lord is in us, with us, we will experience divine Favor. Amen. Amen. That's one thing to note. That once the presence of the Lord is among us, we will experience divine favor. And one thing to note also, that never at one time this woman requested anything. She did not request anything. But God favored her. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Gehazi, verse 14... Gehazi the servant answered and said, She had no child, and her husband is old. We just do not know how long they were married. We don't know how long they probably been, been, been you know, desirous of having a child. But it does not matter how long, because 
he is able to restore the years that the caterpillar, the locust, has eaten up. Years that seem to have been wasted. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we may be able to ask or think. Because weeping may endure for a night. Hallelujah. But joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She had no child and God was going to bless this woman and her husband who is old with a child. And she was even telling the prophet, don't lie to me, man. Don't tell, don't, don't tell me any, 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 any lies. But I'm telling you that when God is ready to bless us, when God is ready to favor us, when the time is fully come, he's going to favor us. Amen. Hallelujah. And the good thing to know that when God favors you, you are well favored. I come to tell somebody today that the time of your change and the season, your season has now come. It is your season. It is your day. Hallelujah. It is your Kairos moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no matter how far and how far-fetched it might look, God is able. Hallelujah. Because he is able to do the supernatural. We are serving a, a miracle work in God. You know, with God, all things are possible. And I want to tell you that it's not over until God says it's over. And it's not over until we win. We must win. And in verse, it came to pass that the same thing that Elisha, the prophet, told this woman that she was going to have a child, that she eventually had a child. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you that in, in, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat had three armies come against him, that a prophet rose up and said, to Jehoshaphat, don't worry about these armies that are coming against you. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Amen. And when they went out, that um, Jehoshaphat re, uh, reimbo, uh, reinforced what the prophet told them. Believe ye the word of God and ye shall be established. Amen. Believe the words of the prophet and so shall ye prosper. This woman recognized that this was truly a man of God. This was a true prophet. This is no false prophet. So when he told her that she was going to have a child, you can afford to bank on it. Amen. When it came to pass that it, it came to pass that all that the prophet told her that she was going to have a child. If, it came to pass that she was able to experience that manifestation of the words of the prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to tell you that, you see, God is not a man that he should lie. Right. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Amen. Once he's spoken it, he's able to fulfill it. Hallelujah. Amen. He's able to fulfill it. Amen. And it says in verse 17, And the woman conceived and bare a son that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And the word, you see, the word is like a seed. In time, it will bring forth fruit. It will manifest. Hallelujah. And in verse 18, it says that one day when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his fathers, to the reapers. Verse 19. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry to him, to his mother. This woman had her son. And the son grew up. And 
she, he went out into the field where his father was. And I don't know if he had a sunstroke, but he was crying for his head. And the father sent him to his mother. And he says, I want you to know that every time we experience the favor of God on our, in our lives, the devil will always come and try to steal what we have. He's a thief. The Lord had favored this woman and her family. This son had brought joy to this home. And now we find that this, this boy, he was probably about 10 years, was now very, very sick. And not only so, that he eventually passed away. And so sometimes some things happen fast without any warning. But I'm thankful because God will not give us something and take it away from us. And I want to tell you that premature death is not our portion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, sometimes some, we go through some really rough experiences. Some very, really bad experiences. But I want to tell you that if we didn't have a problem, hallelujah, we would never know that God can solve them. If we didn't have a test, we would never get our testimony. There is no cross without any, uh, no crown without any cross. This life will not always be smooth. But I'm thankful that Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. No matter what trouble we go through, God can handle them. God can take care of them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It came to a point that this woman, she had her son, and she put her son on her lap. And the, the, the son stayed there until evening, until he passed away. Sometimes some situations get from bad to worse. But I'm thankful that man's extremity, hallelujah, it's God's opportunity. This woman recognized that she had done all that she could do. And what she did, she did something very, very strategic. She took her son and took her to the room that she had made for the prophet and laid him there. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you quickly that sometimes this woman is a, is a tremendous woman because she never gave up on her son. So many times the enemy comes in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You know, so many times that the enemy comes into our home and try to destroy our young people, especially our young men. But this woman said, not so. Hallelujah. Not so. It cannot happen so. God gave this son to me. I'm not going to stay here and let the devil come in and take control. I want to tell this devil that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so often we have to tell the devil, not so, not in my house. We have the power. We have the authority. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In verse 21, he says that she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door and went out. She turned the situation over to God. And ever so often, we have some situations that we have to just throw on God because we can't handle them. We can't solve them. They're too big for us. 
But I know someone who can handle every situation. Who can handle every case. Throw it over to God. Cast all your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Hallelujah. You see, our breakthroughs and our transformation and deliverance begins when we put our cases into the hands who is greater than all our problems. This woman, she did not break down. She did not cry. She knew exactly what she was going to do. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you that Sometimes, as I mentioned before, that sometimes we go through some really rough experiences. But Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2 says, But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I called thee by thy name, sorry. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Amen. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Hallelujah. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Amen. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad that it's even when. Yes. I'm telling you, if trouble has not come to you yet, don't worry. It's coming your way. But it doesn't matter when they come. The Bible said this is God himself speaking. When thou passes through. I want to tell you my brothers and sisters. We're just going to be passing through. We're not going to live. We're not going to dwell. We're just going to pass through. We're going to pass through the waters. We're going to pass through the fire. I'm telling you, the waters are intent in washing away. But we're going to pass through. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're just going to be passing through. See, sometimes when I'm on a, um, traveling, I don't even care so much if I get good food. I don't even care so much if, if I have to be um, the turbulences that I've experienced because I'm just going through. That's not my destination. I'm not going to be staying there getting bad food all the time. I'm not going to be staying there getting turbulence all the time. It's a way I'm going through. Yes. Hallelujah. Even when sometimes I'm in transit, I don't worry so much because that's not my final destination. You know, I'm just going through. Hallelujah. And my brothers and sisters, it might be rough. It might be tough. But don't worry, we're just going through. This is not our, our destination. We must go through. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that God is with us. Once God is with us, we go through the waters. Hallelujah. Once God is with us, we can walk through the fire. Hallelujah. And we know that we will not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon, upon thee. Amen. Hallelujah. This woman experienced death. But she knew exactly what she was going to do. In verse 22 it says, And she called unto her husband and said, Send, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may go Go run to the man of God and come again. And sometimes we get, as I said, we go through some very, very desperate situations. But I'm glad that when, in, when her husband asked her, is all well, verse 23, and he said, wherefore wilt thou go unto him? For he, she said that I will go to the man of God. Yes. And verse 23 says, he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon, no Sabbath. Yes. And she said, it shall be well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 
you see, desperate situations calls for desperate actions. Break all protocols. One thing with God, he does not have no restrictions. We can call him in the morning. We can call him in the night. We can call him any day. He's never busy to hear or cry. This woman said that she, she is going to go and meet the man of God. Because it shall be well. Here we find that this woman is speaking faith. She spoke faith. And we know that faith in God can move mountains. Faith can calm the troubled sea. Faith can make the desert like a fountain. And faith will always give us the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this woman, this great woman, had this young man. And she gave an instruction to the young man that we are going to the man of God, in verse 24, then she saddled an ass and said unto her servant, drive and go forward. Slap not your riding for me, except I bid thee. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 What she was telling this young man is to put on some speed. Yes. Yes. Go forward. Yes. Do not ease up the, 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 the speed until I, eat, I bid you. The woman wanted this young man to ride fast. Put on some speed. And these are the days that we, um, Christians, we are losing our speed. We are dropping our speed. But I come with a word from God. Drive. Hallelujah. Go forward. Hallelujah. Slap not your riding. Hallelujah. Put on some speed. And these are the days when Christians have, have become relaxed and complacent with their mission, with their purpose, while souls are dying without salvation. We need to drive, hallelujah, with enthusiasm, with some zeal, hallelujah. If we are going to experience the supernatural wonders of God, we need the Holy Spirit to stir us up, hallelujah, and energize us and empower us, hallelujah. Go forward. Hallelujah. Slap not your riding. Yes. Drive. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. See, there's only one direction that we want to go. Yes. We want to progress forward. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Slap not your riding. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, if we are slackening, it's time to tighten. Amen. Tighten up because we want to experience the supernatural powers and awesome anointing of God. Hallelujah. And verse 25 says, Hallelujah. and she came, and these are very, these are three important factors that we need in the pursuit of God's divine intervention. So she went, in verse 25, she went and came to the man of God, to Mount Carmel, and when the man of God saw her after Afar off, he said unto Gehazi, his servant, Behold, the, behold yonder is the Shunammite. Verse 26, Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And he, she answered, It is well. Hallelujah. Amen. She spoke faith. Amen. Our topic today it is well, and it shall be well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Both present and future. Right. She did not see any physical evidence, but she spoke it by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And verse 27, when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. Gehazi came near and thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord had hid it from me and not told me. And there are some times that God keeps some things for himself. He doesn't even share it with, with, with anyone else. Because he wants to do a supernatural work 
for us. Hallelujah. And we find that in verse 26, verse 28, she, then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? See, once God has favored you, as I mentioned before, you are well favored. Because God is not a man who starts something and not able to complete it. Because Philippians chapter 4, 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this thing, that he who had begun this good work, he's able to complete it. He's able to perform it until the coming of Jesus Christ. And the prophet told Gehazi, his servant, go and lay his staff on the, on the child's face. But this woman in verse 30, she was very adamant. The woman, the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. This woman wasn't going to go anywhere without the prophet. She was not satisfied that the prophet sent his, his servant Jehazi with his mantle. This woman said, I, you must come back with me. Yes. I'm telling you, when you want something from God, you do not settle for anything less. You just, the Bible says, hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. Because when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. For there has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Amen. This woman decided you must come back with me. Amen. Hallelujah. And in verse 23 it says, eventually, um, she, he, the prophet came and he went in there and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, prayer is a powerful weapon. And for us as Christians who are desiring the movement of God in our situation, we got to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We must pray. Yes. Because prayer is a powerful and supernatural weapon. Yes. Pray until something happens. Yes. This man of God, he went in where this dead child was. That boy was, and he started praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well, and it shall be well. Hallelujah. I tell you that men ought always to pray and not faint. For the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And verse 34, he says that this prophet he went in and he stretched himself over the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Amen. Hallelujah. Life is coming back. Hallelujah. Amen. It is well and it shall be well. Amen. I'm telling you this is a word that God has spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. He said it. Hallelujah. And I believe it and I will receive it and I'm going to speak it. Hallelujah. He said it. I believe it. I receive it. I am going to speak it. Hallelujah. It is well and it shall be well. Hallelujah. I believe your word, God. It doesn't look so at the moment. It doesn't even seem so at the moment. It looks far-fetched at the moment. But I believe it and I receive it and I'm going to speak it. Hallelujah. 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 This prophet, he stretched himself on this young boy and the body started becoming warm. Hallelujah. Thank God. And I'm telling you, it's full time for us to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. He has stolen many things from us. He has stolen our health. He has stolen our wealth. 
He has stolen our confidence. He has stolen our dignity. But we are taking it back in the name of Jesus. It's take back time. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for all our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. It's full time for us to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. And eventually, the man of God, in verse 35, then he returned and walked in the house to and fro. The man of God was warring in the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, the Bible says the weapons of a warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of all, all imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. We have the power. We have the authority. This prophet stretched himself over this boy and this boy started sneezing. As a matter of fact, he sneezed seven times. Amen. Hallelujah. Life is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This boy that was dead, and we don't know how long he was dead for, but no matter if he's dead, we are serving the resurrection, the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able to resurrect yes. every dead situation in our lives, yes. every dead circumstances. No matter how it looks, no matter how it seems, he's able to resurrect them. Hallelujah. And this woman, this, this, this boy, after experienced the power of God through his body, sneezed and opened his eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the, 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 the man of God was able to, In verse 30, he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite, this great woman of, uh, of God. And when she came, he said unto her, take up thy son. Thy son that was dead. Take up your son. He's no more dead, but he's alive. Hallelujah. It wasn't a dead son that the prophet um, uh, gave her. He was a live boy. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God Hallelujah. for restoration. restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. When God has favored you, you are well favored. Amen. And this message is that, you know, um, they, they, I just want to give you a quick um, they, in um, Chicago there was this man in the late 80s 1860s, um, life was good for a man they call Horatio G. Spafford and his wife Anna. And just to make, uh, just to condense everything, that he was a very successful business um, businessman, and the, he had a lot of property. And because of the fire in Chicago that destroyed many of of, of the buildings he had lost lots of money. So it, that was a very, very tragic experience for him. In addition, he also lost a son. Also, he had decided to send his, his family to Europe. And while they were traveling uh, uh, across the Atlantic, the boat sank and four of his daughters passed away. I'm talking about trouble. But I'm glad that it is well and it shall be well. Hallelujah. And so here we find that this man, after those experiences, after those tragic experiences, was able to write this song, It is well. Hallelujah. When peace, like a river, Attended my way. 
When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, hallelujah. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you just quickly that even if it's not even well in this life, it shall be well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though it might not be even well, even if it doesn't um, become well here in this life, it will be well in, our li in the life after. Because God shall wipe away all tears. Hallelujah. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, there will be no more dying. Hallelujah. There will be no more crying. There will be no more trouble. There will be no more trials. Hallelujah. There will be no more disappointments. I come to tell you, my brothers, it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward for that day because I know it's going to be well. Hallelujah. It might not even be well now. It might, never, it might not even be well in this life, but it shall be well. I'm convinced that one of these days, it must be well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It soon be done. Hallelujah. With troubles and trials. Hallelujah. When I get home, on the other side, I'm going to shake hands with the elders. Tell the people good morning. Sit down beside my Jesus. Sit down and rest a while. It's soon be done. It's not going to be always so. It is well and it shall be well. Hallelujah. 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 I'm convinced. God has spoken it. I believe it. I receive it. And I'm going to speak it by faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a message. What a powerful, on time message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have any situation in the house, you want the Lord for, to fix it for you. He's, he's ready to fix it. Amen. Some cases are what human beings call dead, right off. No hope left. Where this child was concerned, no human intervention could have turned this thing around. But by faith, the woman of God said, it is well. It shall be well. And it turned out to be well for her. Amen. If you have a case today, it could be a dead case where a man is concerned, but God wants to turn it around for you today. Come down quickly. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is well. And it shall be well. Amen. No matter how it looks right now. If God says it is well, it will be well. Amen. Hallelujah. It shall be well. God knows how to fix these cases that men call right off. Man say no hope. Man say no, no transformation in this one. It's finished. Final for you. But when God steps in. Everything will change. Everything will turn around. And God's name is going to get the glory. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for ministering today by your word. Truly, we have heard your voice. You're telling us it is well. And you're telling us it shall be well. It cannot end like this. And we refuse to accept the devil's lies. That where we are is where we're going to always be. We refuse to accept the devil's lies, telling us that there is no more hope for our situation. You have sent a word right on time. Hallelujah! To tell us it is well. Hallelujah! And it shall be well. Hallelujah! Man say no hope, but God say hope. God say yes, transformation is possible. A turnaround is possible. A resurrection is possible. Amen. Once I turn upon the scene, something is going to change. You did it for Lazarus. Hallelujah. When those sisters said, Mom, Jesus, if you were here, my old brothers would not have died. But you told them I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, 
Though you were dead, yet shall he live. No case is too hard for Jesus. No case is too difficult for our God. So we spread out our dire cases. We spread out our cases that men call impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. You said, I am the Lord, the God of our flesh. And there is nothing too hard for me to do. Hallelujah. Turn up today for your people, God. Turn it around for your children, God. Reverse every negative word. Reverse every satanic lie. The devil is a liar. Whose report will we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. The Lord said we are healed. The Lord said we are delivered. The Lord said we are, we, are, we are healed. We are delivered. And we are victorious. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The weeping may only endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah for the joy. Hallelujah for the joy. Hallelujah for the joy. Joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. The resurrector is here. Turn around every case, God. Every situation in the, at this altar, you know all about them. And we're asking you to reverse the plans of the enemy. Satan, the blood of Jesus against your attacks. It will not work. It will not prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. God has the final say. Amen. And we're praying that you will restore the years. The locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, met up. Let this be a day of resurrection. Let this be a day of restoration. Let this be a day of re renewal. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we are going into the enemy's camp today by faith and we are taking back everything is stolen from us and we give you praise today for the resurrection for the restoration and for the transformation in our cases that your name will be glorified in Jesus name somebody give God praise for the change man it must turn around Hallelujah. thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message you have heard the word, and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.